Hey everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews, also home to the best MJ community. Today is Thursday, April 25th, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Aurora, getting a lot of requests about this one. And we'll take a look at the chart. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on the technicals and the price action, what to expect there in the days, weeks, months ahead. But as always, this is not financial advice and I'm not a financial advisor. You should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say. Spoiler alert, though, there is record volume, and that's exactly what we want to see nearing you know, a long-term bottom. It's been a brutal four-year bear market thereabouts, and uh, we know that we need to see record volume. We need to see big moves off of the lows, volatility starting to pick back up, and we're starting to see monthly uptrends across the sector, which Aurora has been a bit of a laggard, but we'll take a look at that and some other metrics that we want to see happen and patterns that we want to see occur to be confident that the bottom is in. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. And full disclosure, I do own Aurora in my portfolio. It's a very small position. If you haven't seen my 2024 MJ portfolio update, I give my entire portfolio with percentages. You can check out that video on YouTube as well. And you can also follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at RootPow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. So taking a look at the ACB chart here at the moment. So we do have record monthly volume. You can see here there's still four days left in the month as well. Well, uh, essentially, there's only two trading days. Uh, well, today's Thursday, so uh, we have Friday. And then, yeah, we have Monday and Tuesday. So we've only got three more trading days to end the month, but this is looking fantastic. As you can see, we have 273.423 million shares traded so far this month, and the previous record on the NASDAQ before that was 159.107 million shares. Granted, the price was a lot higher back then as well. So in terms of actual dollars traded, uh, you know, it's a big difference there whenever, you know, you're at all time lows and you're seeing tons of shares traded, it doesn't always add up to be the same amount, right? Because the share price is much lower. But just for comparison's sake, in one day, Tilray in March 2023, had $2.2 billion traded just on the NASDAQ alone. So that means 2.2-ish billion dollars traded hands just on Tilray on the NASDAQ. And we're starting to see Aurora with tons of volume. Uh, Canopy Growth starting to see tons of volume as well. And this is exactly what we want to see near a bear market bottom and a multi-year bear market is we want to see massive volume. We want to see big moves off the lows. And as you can see, we are already up over 200%, so about 214%. And volume usually precedes price. We do have earnings coming up. It looks like the end of May. So that could be uh, something that uh, potentially puts a wrench into the momentum, but we'll see. Things have been really kind of turning it around. They've been turning it around in terms of their uh, balance sheet and their, their financials. So they're focusing more on the medical aspect of things, which I think is pretty smart because uh, every company in Canada was trying to be everything to everybody. And now you're starting to see very differentiated businesses in Canada with a lot of the different LPs very differentiated, some into retail, alcohol, MJ, some are into retail MJ, some are just, you know, 100% pure MJ plays, some are medical, right? You got some that are manufacturing alcohol and, you know, that are dealing with MJ businesses as well. So, uh, you know, they're, they're all very different. So that's one thing I really noticed about Canada. And if you look at the US, a lot of the names in the US probably going to go through the same trials and tribulations, right? We're going to probably see price wars there. We're probably going to see a lot of consolidation and mergers and acquisitions, because if you look at a lot of the businesses in the US, a lot of them look very similar, right? They don't really have any moat or competitive advantage. They're just, you know, they're, they're all trying to be the same thing, right? And eventually, we know as time goes on, you know, you're going to see that kind of saturation in the market, right? In Canada, I think that at one point there was over a thousand LPs. We just don't need that many producers, right? There's probably going to be like 10 to 20, uh, if not five big ones, right? So taking a look at the monthly chart, this is a great move off of the lows. We're set to potentially close over the monthly EMA 12 as well, which would be huge. The last time we closed above that was way back here, basically in the summer of 2019. So you can see here we got above it, but upper wicked, came back down, continued the monthly downtrend. And then it's just been a absolute brutal bear market ever since. And realistically, since the highs of February 2021, we, we were down you know, 99% from there. So almost 99%. And then from all-time highs down 99.8%. So uh, it's been a brutal ride for Aurora investors. I recently added this one not too long ago. I, I can't remember what my average is at the moment, but I am up on that position. 
and uh, I was very patient on that. I, you know, basically added it just because of all of the hype and catalysts that are coming, rescheduling, right? Germany, uh, there's so many catalysts on the horizon, Florida, Ohio coming online next month. We have Pennsylvania, right? We have safer banking looking like that could be attached to a crypto bill. So it's looking really, really good. And these charts are starting to show signs of a major catalyst coming. And in my opinion, I think the most likely scenario is we get the schedule three announcement and decision. I think they're going to approve it, DOJ, DEA. And then there'll probably be, you know, a two, three months, maybe longer waiting period, comment period. It'll go through some other, other regulatory hoops and whatnot and red tape. And then eventually more than likely into 2024, the end of it, or beginning of 2025, we actually see it rescheduled. And then summer of 2025, we could see uh, Florida adult use go live, which I think is most likely scenario there. I think it'll get approved. And uh, pillar two in Germany, right? So there's so many growth catalysts that's not even funny in Canada. We know this excise tax can't remain the same forever. Uh, something's got to give at some point and uh, store cap doubling in Ontario. There's there's so many catalysts, right? So everything that we're, we need to see is basically the only thing we haven't seen is really price. And now we're finally starting to see price and we're finally starting to see volume come in. So we still have yet to change the monthly trend though. And as of right now, we're still in a monthly downtrend with lower highs and lower lows. So key resistance is going to be 1150. The high of this month was 888. So if we break 1150, we're no longer in a monthly downtrend, but we still need to confirm monthly uptrends. So once we top out here on the monthly time frame, we'll look for a higher low and a higher high. So if you're wondering when might be a good idea to add ACB, if you're looking for entries, obviously not financial advice, but not telling you to buy, sell, or hold. But if you're looking for a entry, a monthly higher low might be a decent entry in in order to start the higher low, we need to confirm consolidation has begun and we would have to lose the low of the previous monthly candle. So what bulls want to see is as big of a bounce here as possible for that higher low to form. Because if we were to start monthly consolidation, say next month in four days, we would have roughly about 31% to form it, which isn't too bad. But ultimately what bulls would want to see is to continue the bounce next month and then set the higher low into June. So... Uh, it's looking pretty good at the moment, and we're getting above monthly EMA 12, like I said, which is the first time in how many months? <laughs> Last time, I guess we closed above it here. So if we close above it this month, and that key level is sitting at 646 USD. So if we close above that, that's going to be the first time in 57 months or 1,736 days. So major momentum shifting here to the bulls. And on the weekly time, we, uh, time frame, we finally had our weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross. And the last time that happened was the big run-up into February 2021 highs when we skyrocketed about 425%. So we're seeing that, and we're seeing a golden cross very close to occurring as well. And the last time that happened, again, was back in February 2021. So this has been a brutal bear market. And like I said, we're going to potentially see that over the next, call it, few weeks, a couple months at the most, in my opinion. You can see here the 50 days at 462 and the 200 is at 498. So they're very close to crossing. And like I said, that's two That's two out of the three things that I'm looking for. Weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull crosses, golden crosses, and monthly uptrends. So we still have yet to confirm the monthly uptrend. And we're, we're at least a month or two away from confirming that monthly uptrend. So we got a lot of work to do still. But we're it's looking very good. Like it's very promising. So in terms of the weekly moving average here on the 10 week, we're well above it there at 484. We did potentially, we actually did see a bear cross of the stochastic and a potential uh, shift here in the MACD. But as of right now, bulls are defending that, holding above the 10 week moving average. So it's looking really good in terms of the weekly macros. In terms of weekly moving averages, we topped out right at the 100 weekly there, and that was at 820. So as you can see, very strong resistance, but a lot of our names, if you take a look at some of our names in the MJ space, right? Green Thumb came very close to its 200 weekly. Take a look at high tide just to, for a couple comparisons came very very close so if acb were to do something similar that would be putting us back at about 40 bucks right but that's factoring in post split so uh, they just did a one for ten another uh, split so you know these reverse splits have been plaguing the industry but it, it's unfortunately uh, the sign of the times right and you know the, a lot of the u.s names once they uplist to the nice and the nasdaq then it's potential that they run into the same issues but as of right now we're looking pretty decent, and if we can start to get back, I don't think we're going to get to forty dollars anytime soon. But if we can get to you know somewhere around that fifteen to twenty dollar mark over the next couple of months, I think that would be realistic. As I mentioned on this monthly bounce, we hit eight eighty eight, so we came very close to that ten dollar mark. And then after that, like I said, we've got some runway until the two hundred weekly moving average. And at the moment, we're above all of our daily moving averages. So the charts are telling us 
that massive moves are coming. We just don't know exactly when, right? That's the thing about charts is it's very hard to predict time. I've yet to find anybody that can predict time accurately when it comes to uh, technicals or charting. But all the signs that we want to see are there. It's just a matter of when, right? It's just, is it going to be days? Is it going to be weeks? Is it going to be months? Is it going to be years? I'm in the camp of thinking it's more line, more along the lines of a weekly time frame. I think any week now, we're going to get that approval of uh, Schedule 3. I think that's going to be the most likely scenario. And as I mentioned before in a previous video, it usually takes them around six months to do their scheduling review, which is right around the same a time frame that we're at now. So I'm hopeful that it's going to be very, very soon, but just keep in mind, if even if we get rescheduling to schedule three approved, it has to go through a 60 day comment period, maybe even 90 days. And then other, you know, there's going to be a lot of other red tape and uh, hoops to jump through. So, you know, it could be many, many months, it could be three to six months after it comes out that it actually gets enacted and then 280 goes away, right? So they're going to play all kinds of shenanigans afterwards, right? They're going to, uh, we're going to probably get an approval of schedule three, everything will run up, you know, 100, 200, 200%. And then they'll say, oh, well, don't get your hopes up. It still has to go through the comment period. And then there'll probably be a bunch of FUD and negativity coming from that, right? So just know that we're on the right path and uh, the light is shining at the end of the tunnel. And it looks like we're very close to the end of this. And potential for a new multi-year bull market. And I do think that MJ is going to be one of the best performing, if not the best performing sector over the next year or two, as we look for big tech to see its final blow off top moment and uh, potential for a multi-year bear market ahead for that, which should bode well for MJ stocks. As we know, it's been not really participating in the everything bubble of 2023 and beyond. All right, going into there, it's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you again on the next video.